What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. So we're gonna be covering today, I know that the Vancouver Regionals just wrapped up, uh, but I think you guys are gonna find this just insane team that just won the Thailand Championships. I think you guys are gonna find that a little bit more exciting. Uh, so I'll be covering Vancouver tomorrow. Today we're gonna be talking about Thailand. Now, Thailand just had a particular Pokemon that has everything going against it win the championship. And that one was Xerneas. You might be thinking, how did Xerneas win this championship when Zacian runs around, when Kartana's being picking up in usage, Dialga's a thing. It, it faced it faces so much adversary um, in in this format that it's like, okay, like there's no way it's gonna work. But it did. And the adaptation that Nantaro used to win this tournament was insane. But yeah, uh, before we get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, and I'm going to try doing double uploads. Um, so like 12pm, 3pm, like those are the uploads that I'm going to do. One of them is going to be a shorter discussion video like this one, and then one of them is going to be like a regular content video. So yeah, let's talk about it. Let's actually start from 8th and work up to 1st. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because I want to talk about this team in, in a little bit more depth than the other ones. So in 8th here, we have Kalpa Southorn, who ran Zacian, Eveltal, Incineroar, Amoongus, Thunderous, and Regieleki. It's actually pretty rare to see Thunderous and Regieleki on the same team, mainly because they sort of fulfill the same role on most archetypes where they're just like a hyper-offensive electric type, whether Thunderous is running, you know, um, Assault Vest or Life Orb Physical, or if it's running... Uh, special set. In that case, it's probably more supportive. Uh, and Regieleki tends to be also pretty hyper offensive. It wants to run a life orb. It wants to run like a focus sash or a magnet. Uh, so I'm actually not too certain what's going on here. I didn't get to see any matches with that. Um, here we have, uh, I'm going to butcher these pronunciations. So I'm just going to say 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Like I'm going to just say the numbers. In 7th, we have a Calyrex Shadow Kyogre uh, with Incineroar, Indeedee, Porygon 2, and Regieleki. Uh, we actually don't really see too much Calyrex Shadow Kyogre. Uh, like, it's interesting that it top cut twice here. Um, but I think the reason we don't see it too much is because if they even look at Niveltal, they lose. Uh, however, obviously, you know, the Regieleki can pick up a lot of slack there, especially if it's physical Regieleki with a Life Orb. Uh, that's, like, capable of one-shotting pretty much anything it needs to one-shot. Uh, so if that is the case for this one, it would be able to deal with it pretty well. And even if it isn't, it still has, like, a decent matchup versus it. Um, they do have Porygon 2 and Indeedee, so I'm kind of thinking that the Kyogre isn't as fast. It's probably uh, Trick Room. Uh, and it wants to be under that trick room, probably getting helping handed max geysers or water spouts or origin pulses. So, yeah, like it, it's always interesting when we see like these tournaments that don't get as much coverage because the top cuts are always super, super crazy. Uh, we have Zashing Kyogre with Lando, Kartana, Grimmsnarl, and Gothitelle. Now, you actually see there are two Gothitelles in top cut, and Gothitelle is something that has been not covered nearly as much as it should have been in this format in my opinion let me go to pokemon showdown here um got oh it's down for maintenance i have never seen this screen wow that's like a shiny uh okay well we can't look at pokemon showdown but <laughs> gothitel is a pokemon that has the ability shadow tag which means you cannot switch out on it unless you are a ghost type um or i believe if you also have shadow tag i forgot if that's actually a thing i'm pretty sure that's a thing um but if uh gothitel hits the field versus something like, you know, with a Kyogre or a Zacian uh, next to it, and you're stuck in there with something that doesn't want to face those two things, not only are you kind of out of luck because you can't switch, but this generation Gothitelle also got access to Fake Out, uh, which is a super, super nice move for a Pokemon that doesn't allow you to switch, because not only are you not allowed to switch, uh, you're not allowed to move the first turn half the time if, you know, you don't have a faster Fake Out or Quick Guard or something, uh, and that can be very frustrating. I'm actually quite concerned for when Dynamax goes away, uh, because Fake Out Gothitelle could be a little bit absurd. We actually saw Gothitelle get banned from grassroots tournaments earlier in the format, or earlier in the year. Um, we saw like Eevee Cup, where we banned Dynamax and it was just supposed to be a fun tournament, but we also banned Gothitelle and Urshifu, which was kind of crazy uh, because we didn't want them to be over centralizing. So I think despite the fact that Dynamax sort of keeps Gothitelle in check, uh, even then, like once Dynamax is like still here, like, you know, you're, you're still dealing with the fact that you can't switch, that there's a hyper offensive Pokemon next to it and that's going to be able to do whatever it wants the first turn. Like that's still absurd. Not only that, 
but a recent thing that's been happening is people have been running faster Gothitelle with no attacks and uh, and hypnosis uh, because at base 65 speed you can actually get some decently quick hypnosis is off uh, and it's basically a 60% chance to lock something down for one to three turns so that's can, that can be a bit absurd in fifth we have another Calyrex Shadow Kyogre team uh, this one doesn't have Trick Room, it actually is a bit more hyper-offensive. We see Ferrothorn, which is great for Kyogre, obviously, you know, you're decreasing the damage from fire moves, uh, allowing it to be a much more nuisance, uh, much more of a nuisance, but uh, the Whimsic Hot makes me think that uh, this Kyogre is actually be much faster, because, you know, this one has Porygon 2, this one has Whimscott, this one wants, uh, this one wants Trick Room, this one wants Tailwind, very simple. Uh, I don't know. There's not much, there's not much to say about this team. It, once again, it doesn't quite like Eveltal, uh, because... <laughs> You know, because Eveltal uh, is pretty much only checked by if you have like an electric type and, you know, they don't have one here. But uh, I would imagine that they, you know, didn't have too much trouble during the tournament after all they got fifth. So that's pretty awesome. This team is actually uh, the same one that we saw got second and either seventh or sixth or eighth at um, at Secaucus Regionals. Uh, you know what it does. It's just Gothitelle, Fast Hypnosis. Um, we have Decorate Alchemy and then like standard Palkia Calyrex Ice. Very solid, very cool. Here's where we get into the crazy stuff. And I know you guys are on the edge of your seat wanting to hear about the Xerneas team because I watched the finals on Facebook and I'm like, oh, okay, this is absurd. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this team is Kyogre Dialga, another archetype we don't really see too much. Uh, we got Incineroar Tornadus, uh, Latios, or Latios and Thunderous Therian. Now, Thunderous Therian is actually kind of interesting uh, because this format has seen a high usage of hyper-offensive electric types. And while Thunderous Therian does fall into that, you know, into that role, um, it doesn't do it as well as other things because uh, it wants to be a special attacker uh, and it loses access to a good airstream because... When it becomes the Therian form, its attack stat drops pretty significantly and you want to run a special attack. Uh, so your fly isn't doing quite as much. However, what it does get is immunity to Electro Web and immunity to pretty much any electric move. Not only that, but Volt Absorb just heals you from that. Uh, so what I'm curious about here is, is this thing like a salt vest? Is it scarf? Like, what is it doing? But yeah, uh, beyond that, you know, Tried and true, Tornadus, Incineroar, Kyogre is always going to do work. Uh, Dialga obviously uh, has the option to go for Trick Room, but um, even if you don't, like Life Orb Dialga is pretty decent into stuff like Zacian, and even Groudon it does pretty well into, because you're typically faster if you invest, right? Um, and you're going to be able to go for Max Worm Winds, Max Steel Spikes, and just be a huge nuisance for a lot of Pokemon. But yeah, in second, we have just standard Torn Ogre um, with uh, Zacian and Kartana and Amoongus. Like, this is... the I don't know, like this is something that you tend to see a lot. There's nothing too special here, but it was piloted super well to get to second place. Uh, and obviously, like it's something that we've seen top cut many, 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 many tournaments. Kyogre Zashin is one of the best archetypes in the game right now. Um, it doesn't really have any true losing matchups, in my opinion. It only just kind of goes even versus things like this thing went even versus like Rinya Sun when Rinya Sun was in its prime. Um, Versus, like, like, I truly don't think this thing has any, like, really bad matchups. A lot of things tend to struggle versus, like, Calyrex Ice plus Palkia or Calyrex Ice plus Kyogre, like, any kind of, like, Trick Room. Uh, but this team has, like, enough defensive options to make it work. Amoongus under Trick Room can deal with Calyrex Ice and anything else. And, yeah, it's just super solid. But here we have first place. Now, you guys have been waiting for this. So, uh, Nantaro here actually ran Xerneas, Groudon, Incineroar, uh, Venusaur, Grimmsnarl, and Charizard. Now, Xerneas is a Pokemon that has dropped heavily in usage. It used to be like number one in VGC for restricted formats, or not number one, because you know Kyogre and Groudon would usually edge it out just a little bit. But it was always super, super scary, especially next to Groudon, because Groudon checks Steel types, Groudon checks Poison types, anything that might want to deal with Xerneas, like a Nihiligo or. Uh, a Kartana or a Stack Attacka, they'd have to deal with Groudon, and that was never fun. Well, Zacian is sort of a fringe case in if we take like the entire history of VGC in the fact that it can go toe to toe with Groudon um, and usually eat a Precipice Blades. So the fact that it does that hard walls out a lot of Xerneas's moves before um, before Geomancy and can even take like you know plus two Moonblast like it's nothing. Uh, means that Xerneas has dropped a lot, especially since this is like one of the most highest used Pokemon in the format. 
This team did an adaptation that I think we should have seen coming. Uh, Charizard has been proven to be extremely good. We saw Sun teams dominate the format for a long time, heavily, heavily leaning on Charizard's ability to just remove things from the field early on, especially Zacian. Zacian hates Charizard because um, it can just one-shot it, and it can go for airstreams if you want to switch out, and then it can go for max wildfire and you take chip damage, and it's not fun. Uh, Venusaur can do much the same, uh, but it's more used to deal with uh, Kyogre than anything, because obviously this team doesn't like Kyogre very much, but if you have the Venusaur versus a Kyogre, you're not going to struggle too much. Uh, the real MVP of this team, in my opinion, is going to be this Grimmsnarl. Now, turn one of game one, we saw what this Grimmsnarl was capable of. Um, so Grimmsnarl is running a Burning Jealousy screen set, uh, and by running Burning Jealousy, it's actually able to do something that a lot of people aren't aware of for some reason, but I feel like you should be if you're playing the game. On turn zero of the game, the turn that everything hits the field for the first time, things like Zacian that get a, well, I guess, you know, Zacian and Zamazenta are really the only two cases of this, that get plus one on lead will get burned if you burn them turn one. Because turn zero is sort of like mixed with turn one, it's hard to explain. But yeah, if you burn Zacian turn one, it will get burned, like you're with Burning Jealousy. This Grimmsnarl was not only able to burn the Zacian, it was able to pick up a KO on Sash Tornadus and burn a Landorus game one. And from that point on, the Xerneas had no issue sweeping. This team is so well put together that the Xerneas doesn't, like you don't even blink an eye after watching this, this team operate for a few minutes. You go, oh yeah, Xerneas, that makes perfect sense. Which is just something you don't hear about in VGC 2022. It's really cool. I really like this team. I would love if you would release like a paste for it because this is just absolutely crazy. Uh, beyond that, like beyond the Grimmsnarl, it's fairly like what you'd expect. You know, it's going to be a hyper offensive Charizard. Um, you know, Groudon is going to do Groudon things, and you got screens on the Grimmsnarl. Like it's it's super super like predictable, but so solid in like its flowcharty nature that you it's it's so just insanely insanely reliable. But yeah, um, th that's that's about it. Like honestly, like this is a really interesting tournament. Um, the, I'll leave the link to the Facebook live, uh, in the description down below. Here it is. You know, they actually streamed it on Facebook. I, I think it was mixed with the TCG tournament. So y the first half of the tournament is going to be VGC, or I guess it's mixed throughout, but yeah, this has been a very interesting tournament to follow. I highly recommend you guys check out tournaments that aren't like major events once in a while. Um, not, I guess this is a major event, but I mean like majorly publicized events, uh, like Vancouver regionals. Cause this, this tournament didn't receive nearly as much coverage as it should have given the quality of the matches that you can watch. But yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.